BTEC Applied Science Unit 5 Viscosity. This is the second of my videos about uh, fluids and the flow of fluids, the mechanics of fluids. I've only done two videos. I think I've squeezed in everything you need to know. So this video is about viscosity. What do you need to know about viscosity? Well, here's some fluid. Again, imagine it's water flowing through a pipe. Now, as it flows through the pipe, uh, it'll flow faster in the middle of the pipe than uh, elsewhere. This is looking at a, a cross section of the pipe, like if you slice the pipe with a, oh, got a message. Anyway, if you slice the pipe with a knife, then the water flows faster in the middle and then it's slower and slower towards the edges. Now, why does this happen? Uh, and it's due to friction. If we imagine that uh, the water's flowing in layers, so layers of water flowing inside the pipe, or lamina is another word for layers, then uh, first of all, there'll be friction between the outside layer and the wall of the pipe. So the wall of the pipe is trying to drag the fluid to try and stop it flowing because that's what friction does, it opposes motion. So there'll be a friction force, first of all, between the edge of the fluid and the pipe, the wall of the pipe. Then if we imagine that the water is flowing in layers, it's laminar flow, then there'll be friction between the different layers. And because of that, they will travel at different speeds in the pipe and the friction force will get less and less as you move towards the middle of the pipe. So this diagram shows this friction force, which is called a, a shearing force between the different layers of fluid inside the pipe. So this internal friction inside the fluid is viscosity. That's what viscosity is this internal friction, this friction between the layers of fluid flowing through the pipe. And the friction force gets smaller towards the middle because the difference in velocity between the layers gets smaller. This is a velocity profile, and it basically shows that the, the velocity is greatest in the middle, and then it gets less and less as you move towards the edge and we actually assume that at the edge where it's touching the inside of the pipe, it's zero. So this is a velocity profile for laminar or streamline flow. In the, in the specification, it calls it streamline flow. And you should recognize that, maybe be able, be able to sketch it. Uh, viscosity, a bit more about viscosity. When an object moves through a fluid, there are resistive forces acting on it. There's like friction forces. There are retarding forces which try to slow it down or to stop it moving. Uh, and this is called viscous drag. In this experiment, uh, we're dropping a marble. So uh, we have these measuring cylinders with different liquids in. There's water, some kind of a light oil, like maybe cooking oil, and then honey. And if you imagine dropping a marble into each of those, what's going to happen? Uh, and there will be a lot more friction force. Well, when it reaches terminal velocity, the friction force will be equal to the weight. But initially, at any particular velocity, there will be more friction force uh, if the fluid is more viscous. And we talk about the property of a fluid called the coefficient of viscosity. The coefficient of viscosity, the bigger it is, then the more friction forces there will be at a particular velocity. Okay, honey is a very viscous fluid. Uh, water is much less viscous. We talked about laminar flow. Now, this is turbulent flow. Turbulent flow isn't in layers, it's all over the place. And in some places it flows around in circles called eddy currents. Eddy currents may form in the overall current. It may swirl around 
the fluid is flowing all over the place. It's turbulent. If you've been in an aeroplane and oh, we're going through some turbulence, then you're wobbling all over the place. Uh, now, whether this happens or not will depend on the velocity. Uh, the faster the fluid is flowing, then the more likely it will become turbulent. It'll depend on the diameter of the pipe and it will depend on the viscosity of the fluid. OK, so turbulent flow. That's this diagram here. It's crazy. Uh, really, when you're designing things like cars and aeroplanes and other vehicles which move through the air, then you don't want turbulence. Uh, why? Because there's more friction. And if there's more friction, then uh, it's less efficient. More energy is lost due to friction when the flow is turbulent. Also, uh, turbulence, as I said earlier, can cause vibrations. Uh, and that can be uncomfortable and it can also cause stresses inside the materials, you know, so the wing might fall off. Yeah, uh, probably won't. Don't worry about that. But uh, so when you design these cars, etc., on a computer and in something called a wind tunnel, uh, you're trying to get rid of turbulence. You want the car to be as streamlined as possible. We don't want turbulence. Uh, in a liquid, uh, now viscosity and temperature. In a liquid, such as the oil inside an engine, which is a, a lubricant, that's why it's there, uh, viscosity gets less at higher temperatures. Uh, the liquid particles have more energy, so the layers of particles have less friction as they slide against each other. So the oil in an engine is a better lubricant at higher temperatures. When I start my motorbike, it's a good idea to just let the engine run for a few minutes before you start going off on a ride to let the oil uh, and to let the engine warm up. And then the oil is a much better lubricant. So the viscosity gets less at higher temperatures for a liquid. For a gas, it's actually the other way around. Viscosity increases at higher temperatures. And that's because the, the layers of gas uh, are moving around more and they interfere with each other more. So there's more friction at higher temperatures. So this might come up. It's an interesting point. What happens with vis viscosity and temperature? The last point now is uh, there's some fantastic videos. Look for a video about somebody running on custard uh, or corn flour. If you get lots of corn flour and mix it with water or custard powder and mix it with water, if you just stand in it, then you sink. It behaves like a liquid, but you can actually run over it. If you hit it with a hammer, it behaves like a solid. So how it behaves depends on the velocity of the object which is exerting the force on it. So it's a very strange kind of fluid. It's called a uh, non-Newtonian fluid. A Newtonian fluid obeys, should be a capital letter, Newton's laws of motion. Yes, uh, a non-Newtonian fluid uh, doesn't appear to. It behaves very strangely. Another fantastic video to look at would be um, if you put corn flour on top of a, a loudspeaker. I'll put some links in the, um, the waffle at the bottom of the video. Look at corn flour mixed with water on top of a loudspeaker. It looks crazy. OK, its properties are velocity dependent. Uh, another example uh, is uh, ketchup. If you want your ketchup to come out of the bottle, then you give the bottle a good whack. Why does this happen? Uh, I doubt you'll be asked to explain why. It's because the particles in the fluid take a bit of a bit of time to arrange themselves so that the fluid can flow. OK, so it's um, another name for it is a thixotropic, uh, thixotropic material. OK, its properties are velocity dependent. It is non-Newtonian. Uh, 